Because that love has to be perfected. So you have to go through stuff. And every increment of your growth, conflict comes. And you have a choice on which direction you're going to go. There's nobody in this building tonight that was forced to respond or react to God in a situation. You can tell because you can see it. It's a fork in the middle of the road. You have a choice. It's like a big old, am I, am I right? Yes, sir. Neon lights say, are you going to pick God or are you going to do what you always done? You can see it be blinks. And you, and you can feel it because you, your body starts going to withdrawals. <laughs> am I right? You can feel it in your body. You can feel it in your emotions because that's when everything comes up. I'm telling you from personal experience. I know. Because the first thing going to show up is self-justification. Whenever there's conflict, it's, that's the first thing that shows up. Self-preservation, self-justification, self is on the throne. Why they did it to me, why they did it that way. And those are things that are anti-Christ in nature. They want to make sure a church never gets its footing, can never establish the kingdom of God, and that they, we will serve without rhythm, without unification. And we'll, you get what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I want to... Like, who was that? Janet Jackson? I want a rhythm nation. Come on now. I want a rhythm nation. I want us to be in rhythm. I mean, because the army's in rhythm. You ever seen the army? To the left, to the right, to the left, right, left. Come on. I know that's not like stripes, but. Am I right? That's what I was trying to do. To the left, to the left, to the left. You know what I'm saying? But I want to. That's why I believe we should be so susceptible to the impressions of the Holy Spirit that our activity in the Spirit are so. Sound without any silhouettes, without any shadows. Such a oneness. We have to hide in it, y'all. The enemy gonna pick us off. Trust me, that's that's how he gets us. See, because when all comes, when when rejection comes, whenever some of the negative things come, it takes you away from the whole. And then all of a sudden, oh, that's who he is. I've been looking for him. But he was hiding in the corporate setting. Yeah. And so the enemy wanted to just get you off step. We moving this way. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And then you try to figure out what happened. Yeah. We got out of rhythm. Mm-hmm. When, when we're talking about mending and being perfectly joined together, we're talking about it's a rhythm in your heart. And the rhythm that we have to have is love. So you have to go and you have to go to 1 Corinthians 13 and you have to let the Spirit of God saturate your soul. So there are some characteristics and traits that's found over there that help us out. But, you know, what we come from some hard places, so, you know, we're not going to necessarily, you know, be punked. <laughs> Am I right? Come on now. Y'all know we come from some I mean, I'm going to say we come from some ponds. <laughs> but we come from, yeah, some of us do. We come from the places where we have to have a certain image. And that self-image won't allow us to have an identity as a whole people. As community. And you can hear it because this is the first thing that shows up in your head. That's the first voice that shows up. Anybody ever been there? You're in, I've, been in, I've been in a few. The first thing when it show up ain't the answer. Trust me. The solution is once I get done emotionally, then God says something. But that's after I had a hissy fit. You know what I'm saying? But we got to know there's a place that the Father want to bring us to that we'll be able to rejoice with one another and the enemy can't disrupt our rhythm. He can't destroy the covenant of peace that God has given us through the venue called relationship. It's a covenant of peace within the body. We've been joined together as a body. And God has endowed, endowed us and empowered us with his divine nature so that we can reflect the Godhead. Amen? So we can become one. One calling. So we can be one body as four says. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, which who is above all, through all, and in you all. So when I attack you, I attack him. (coughs) I'm no better than Saul on the road to Damascus. When we have threatenings towards one another. And that's what the enemy does. 
He, he wants us to self-implode. Yes. Yes. We ain't dealing with no real big devils, y'all. Nope. We just dealing with some of our imagination and stuff. Amen. And he just he just gonna step back and let us do what we need to do to one another. Mm. So we devour one another. And we need to know there is power in unity. Mm -hmm. There is a un unanimous power, an executive power that God wants to place upon authentic covenant relationship within the body for the greater good. Tell your neighbor for the greater good. For the greater good. I believe it. This is one of the highest and greatest schemes of the enemy. Is to conquer and divide. Mm -hmm. Is to break covenant relationships in the body of Christ. And he knows that we are capable of, of being one if we're submitted to the voice of God. And if we choose to allow the principle of God to become our rear guard. Mm -hmm. He knows that we have the potential to do great harm to his kingdom. And he knows that there's a great one that lives on the inside of us. And if we choose to draw from the resources that God has put on the inside of us, then we'll be able to expose him to his demise. Right? And so as we begin to understand collectively and we get a revelation of how God is harnessing us as a unit, then we are able to demonstrate uh, true unification in the earth. And then they'll know not by our preaching, not by our teaching, but by our love. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that, that the world would know that we're his disciples by what? Oh, y'all, is that too hard to say, y'all? Come on, just repeat that to me. What? Love. Loving one another. Come on now. Y'all need a love walk. Everybody like the faith walk. See, you can get faith without changing. You can't walk in love remaining the same. Sure. Now you can walk in filet or I'm the father God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To lay your life down for one another. And that's what God wants to get us to a point where we can understand how significant it is for us to be healthy and whole in how we represent him in the earth, right? So, so the enemy knows that he can't keep us from being anointed, but he shall keep us isolated from one another. Especially when we don't understand the value of the people around us providing for us what we can't get on our own. Yes. Yes. So he wants to keep you, you know, so he can't keep us from being anointed. He knows we got a power source that there's no weapon formed against it. But if he can keep you in isolation, keep you isolated, keep you on an island to yourself. He understands because if we don't understand the value of community and what it provides for us which is a representation that we can't get it on our own. We cannot survive on our own. And most of the time, it's this mindset called isolation that has contributed greatly to spiritual impotence. Trust me, the way he just wears you out, trust me, I know I've been doing this thing too long. He wants to disconnect your communication. Mm -hmm. You see, let me tell you something. The, the enemy fights just like they fight in the natural. Amen? Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. In the natural, what the enemy likes to do, let's just use a parallel, a lot of the forces that we see, I don't care if it's Russia, China, mm -hmm. I don't care if it's medieval times, I don't care if it was that uh, was there one in Texas, Alamo, there you go. I don't care. And that's a great picture of how the enemy can get you. Mm -hmm. So they want to do three things. The enemy always want to do three things to you. First thing he want to do is break off your communication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Second thing he wants to do is hinder your mobility. No movement. Stay stagnant. Third thing he wants to do is he want to make sure there's no provision. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he knows if you break your line off with me, come on, let's walk it out. No communication, right? Mm -hmm. And he knows that you don't have any intentions on responding to what's being taught. No movement. Mm -hmm. 
and that you won't receive the, the word that's being released. He, that's isolation. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all still got your bro? Right, yeah. So this, this is how isolation contributes to spiritual impotence. But in community, there is life. Yes. Wow. When you come to a building, there is life. I, I was uh, listening to somebody at the barbershop, and she was saying how, you know, she's been in the, in the backside of the desert. I told her, she said, seven years. Said, that's way too long. God ain't, that's not daddy. You don't do it like that. I had, to, I had to stand up for him. Some people come up with their own doctrine out of their pain. You can't come up, you can't perceive God in your pain. My pain is not a perception of how good God is. My pain may just be self-inflicted, may just be pain. May it could be process. I don't know, but it ain't him giving it to you. And she said, uh, she said, she found a church home in the city, and she said, you know, I, I said, oh, okay, great. She told me who it was. I said, okay, praise God. And she was telling me how that she's able to listen to it on uh, Facebook Live, but it ain't the same. She said, just something about being in the building. I said, I probably, because I put that on tape <laughs> so I can play it back in my church. You know, some of us in 20 mile radius, they can't get it. I said, put it in if I can just catch it on the group, I'm good. She said, now it's just something therapeutic when you're on site among the people, even though you don't have to greet nobody. It's just something there when you're among the group. I said, that's community life. That's the fulfillment of the first thing that, that the father said to Adam. It's not good if man be alone. I know we look at it on a, on a, a, a merit, a, as a marriage ceremony or whatever, but it, it, it's still, it's a parallel truth. Mm -hmm. It's not good that none of us be alone. Amen. 